Uh, so next coming up, we have Miss Erica Brooks and Sherry Mann. They are here to talk about the hey, the special pops, uh, interactive tools for student engagement, virtual Bitmoji classroom and tech tools, and G Suite for ELs and special education. So I will let them take the stage at this time. Uh, we appreciate you being with us. How are you this afternoon? Hello, everyone. How are you guys? I am getting ready to share my screen. Let me know. All right. When you just come and I'll see if I can see your screen there. All right. Sherry, I love your earrings. <laughs> Thank yes, you. Yes, your screen, Miss Sherry. All right. Okay. So can you guys see my screen? Yep, we can see it. Awesome. All right, so um, let's go ahead and put it in present mode. All right, we'll get ready here just a second. I wanna make sure my closed captioning is on for you guys, and I think it is. So uh, welcome, um, my name is Erica Brooks, and I am a teacher at Western Day Treatment. Um, and I absolutely love the title of my uh, presentation for you guys today. So don't let virtual learning take you overboard. Um, I have dived overboard into the Bitmoji craze as I'm sure the rest of your coworkers have. Um, today, we're gonna get a chance to explore all of the different ways you can utilize the Bitmoji in your classroom. You can engage staff, you can engage students, um, and I also have some fun resources. Of course, teachers, you know, we love our resources and backpacks and things um, that I am going to share with you guys. So first up is let's talk about why Bitmoji. Well, for one, the Bitmoji classroom will allow you to engage your students in you know, all kinds of ways, interactively. You're able to differentiate lessons. You're able to tailor those lessons to those students' needs. And as I said before, I am a special education teacher and I teach grades second through fifth. So what better way for me to utilize um, and differentiate for my students in a Bitmoji classroom. So there's just unlimited possibilities and things that you can do. And it's not just for elementary school teachers. It's not just for ECE teachers. You can use this for if you're a counselor, you can connect with parents, you can connect with staff. So um, why Bitmoji? Because it's interactive, it's engaging, it's accessible, and it's fun, of course. And um, Erica, I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt, but do you mind closing out your notes section? There's a bot, so, yep, yeah. there we go. Okay. Now we can see it, awesome, yeah. thank you. Uh, you're welcome, no problem. Alrighty, so um, here are some ways we can use the Bitmoji Classroom. So um, I, for the sake of time, um, I am gonna click on certain things that I feel like I really wanna share with you guys today that are important, but um, the link is in the presentation shared on the Kentucky Go Digital. So if you have time, please go back and look at all those different things. So let's get started. So this is one of my main classrooms that I am currently using um, right now for summer school. And with the Bitmoji, classroom um, I keep the same layout so I have six weeks of lessons planned already same background I don't change my format you can if you want to but I am able to link um, differentiated reading level books so talk about differentiation right you're able to link those books and I use a site called education.com and it's paid membership We'll kind of click over to that site um, because I want to get you, I want you to be able to see um, what I see. So the students are able to click on that site and it's leveled readers. So I am able to um, put different leveled readers in my Bitmoji classroom where the students are able to click and read the book. It will either read to them or they can um, read the book themselves. So when we go back, um, and they're finished with the textbook, they can then log into my summer reading log. And here I have these is where you can make a copy. So if you want this information, you can have it, it is yours. Um, we always love goodies. So you can click on my summer reading log and it's geared toward the Jan Richardson model um, that I have set up for my students. Um, and I'm not gonna click on it again for the sake of time, but I want you to go ahead and do that in your spare time. And here are games that um, I had for week four. It's also linked to the um, education.com website, um, as well as a math notebook. 
So when the students are able to click on, are able to work on the math, um, I have that math topic already posted up in my Bitmoji classroom. They're able to click on it and it'll take them to my very own interactive math notebook that I made. So um, let's go back to uh, this slide. So I also created some um, Bitmoji rewards for my students because it's really important for, and I'm gonna leave it in the um, this mode, but it's really important for students to, especially dealing with our ECE students, for them to have a sense of uh, rewards. And so I'm giving them virtual learners of the week. So if they're able to just complete the task or complete those works during MTI, um, I'm able to provide that for my students. So that's another link that I have for you guys um, to share. Um, one important thing is I noticed during NTIs, how, we're how are ECE teachers supposed to make sure that we are collecting data or making sure that we're sticking with the SDIs or making sure that we're accommodating students with those needs? So I absolutely love this. Um, I took time and created my very own um, virtual daily tracker. Um, and I'm gonna put that in present mode for you because I wanna just do a quick walkthrough of what that looks like. So these are linkable tabs um, and the student is able to work on their work at home. So I can share this with my students and they can do this on their own or with me or with their parent. And what's another fun way to engage the parents in learning. So this is like a point sheet. This is what I use in my classroom um, for my learners, but we now have to make everything digital. We now have to make everything virtual. So the students are able to take brain breaks and the brain breaks will connect them to one of my social skills rooms and we'll get to that. Um, so I'm not gonna click on every tab, but I just wanted to show you all the unlimited possibilities and ways you can engage your learners in the classroom virtually. Um, the next classroom I would love to show you because we are ECE is social emotional learning classroom. Um, I'm gonna skip down to our sensory classroom. This is one of my favorite classrooms. I really love the hangout. Um, my class name is called the Wolf Pack and I take pride in that. And I tell you, my students will howl on command for you if you tell them to. So uh, they really love that. But this room is tied to um, really just a calming room, as well as um, with our school, a state agency school, and I'm at Western Day, my therapist is inside the classroom. So she's using some of these tools and technologies with the students. So I want you to listen in on some of the things that you're able to do with the Bitmoji classroom, like linking audio. So let's listen in. We are going to practice triangle breathing. You will inhale for three counts, hold your breath for three counts, and exhale for three counts. What an amazing way for the learners to um, be able to come down, be able to utilize those coping skills or coping strategies. So you're still meeting the students' needs with a Bitmoji classroom for social skills and making sure that we're being um, uh, you know, diligent with IEP goals and those kinds of things, as well as calm down bottles. Um, here you can link a video to uh, for the parent and the student to engage in how to create calm down bottles. And I do that with my students in the classroom. So it's Bitmoji classrooms. It's like bringing your classroom to life digitally. Um, here I have linked as well. I'm a big fan of Class Dojo. And with this, um, you're able to work on specific social skill needs. So think about mindfulness and all those things that you're doing within the classroom. And again, not just for ECE students, anyone can use this. Um, so I'm going to click over here to our Class Dojo and the students are able to watch the video that I have up for them. They're able to discuss the topic and then share out the information that they've learned uh, from the video and the discussion questions that I have for them inside of the um, Google Classroom. So we're gonna track back for a couple of slides. And then we're gonna go down to our social skills classroom. This is one of my favorite classrooms. Um, I absolutely love it. I have a Star Labs in my classroom and I am able to bring Star Labs to life for my students. They are able to go over in the little area in my classroom and utilize the um, those tangible things like fidget spinners and blocks and games and coloring sheets. So I was like, what can I do 
to make sure that my students are still getting those skills that they need. So um, that is virtual coloring sheet. They're still getting social skills. We work on zones of regulation. There is a timer that I've uploaded in my virtual star labs, 15 minutes. There are Go Noodle um, videos that are safe to link, and I've actually created tutorials um, of how to do that. We're not gonna go in that today, but uh, here they're able to click on games. And another fun, exciting thing is a very interactive PDF tool that the students are able to use. We're gonna take a look at that. Hopefully it doesn't take too long um, to load up, but I found some really great sites. It's just another fun way to engage your learners um, digitally and virtually. So let's give it a minute to load. Hopefully it will. Um, this may take a few minutes. And if not, you can go back and click on that. But it's a, uh, here we go. It's an interactive PDF. So here we, guys, this is amazing. So the students are able to actually type inside of here. So um, I wanted to give them that piece, not just your basic worksheets or how you're feeling. I want them to be able to express that and type that. And I wanted it to be interactive. So um, what makes you happy? We're almost at lunchtime. So I'm gonna type food, of course. Food makes us happy. So the students are able to save it and then upload that to me uh, through Google Classroom or through email. Alrighty. Another fun tool, we'll go back, is a way to communicate with our um, parents. So it's all about, and I'm gonna kinda go back out of my present screen for a little bit, but um, here are some parent supports I'm actually going to click on um, just to give you an overview of the parent support. So you can actually have a parent support page or a you know parent portal page for your school um, where you can link your calendar. I have our newsletter linked. So just another way, think about going back to school. What is that gonna look like for our students? You can do a whole registration parent Bitmoji classroom. Everything is right there at the tip of their fingertips. How cool and amazing is that for our parents, for our students, and for our staff? Okay. We're going to go back into present screen. Here's another uh, fun app um, a teacher friend uh, of mine created, um, which is a parent app. So everything is all about technology, right? So you want to make sure that you're continuing to engage those parents. Um, and definitely, last but not least, I wanted to make sure that I am providing you guys with all of the resources that are needed. I'm going to put closed captioning back on because I just realized that it's not on. But I wanted to make sure that I'm providing you guys with all the resources <clears throat> that you are needed. So the ones that I have starred are the videos that I personally have given tutorials on. I have been able to be a part of some amazing groups and there are so many amazing educators out there that are engaging in the Bitmoji classroom. So, um, you know, we, we call that beg, borrow and steal. So they have allowed me to share some of their resources. So the ones that are starred are things that I've put together for you. Um, and so this was this is a way of resources that you can use for your Bitmoji classroom. Here are ways you can share that Bitmoji classroom, whether it's Schoology, whether it's um, Google Classroom, however you're using those platforms to share that directions um, that we've created for you. Here is some how to link assignments um, for you as well, as well as resources. So how do I get started with the Bitmoji Classroom? Well, I've given you all the tools down here. Here are some special education accessibility. Here are some themes and backgrounds that I've created for you. So that way you can use, here is a ultimate library. This educator is totally amazing. Um, of all the digital library books, everything is already linked for you. Classroom items that you can add to your Bitmoji Classrooms, as well as walls and signs. So there are just so many different things. And we're going to kind of backtrack in the slide because there was one important thing that I really wanted to share with you guys. Um, I am very hands-on with my learners. And being away from them, I wasn't able to do the things that I normally do inside of my classroom with them daily, which is interactive notebooks. I love a good interactive notebook. 
it's hands-on, it's engaging, and it's interactive. So what I did was I created my very own interactive math notebook. And I'm going to go ahead and open that up for you guys to see. You can have it. It is yours. Um, you can tweak it, change it any kind of way you really, really like. I'm going to put this in present mode. Um, but I actually I'm not going to put this in present mode because I want to show you how you're able to type in here. So I took a really long time creating this. But if you can give your students those math problems and they can type them in. Oh, my gosh. I know. Right. How exciting. On top of that, um, what I'm going to do later is create an interactive notebook with problems already filled out. So all of my students have to do is go and say, you know, answer those problems. So this is for you to use. Um, also, what I've done is say if you have a struggling learner, or of course, like I said, I teach ECE, so my students are always struggling. How am I providing them with math manipulatives? So I'm going to put this in present mode one more time and then I'm going to click on my math toolbox so what I did was I created I didn't create but I found a wonderful site for base 10 blocks for the student to go over and you can interact and engage with your student and utilizing the base 10 blocks for your student with that digital math notebook amazing stuff wow erica well. this is i'm sorry to interrupt you but this is amazing and the chat is on fire for you giving you so much love so you'll have to go back and make sure you check that um yes. if it's okay with you are those resources linked right there on the yes. i see everything it is linked. everything is okay linked. great um so if for our viewers uh you can check out her presentation on the schedule we have it linked up for you and reach out to her on twitter she's on twitter um an amazing educator and Involved with Kentucky Go Digital. Attend regional events, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or follow us on Twitter.